Today is just me making a video by myself and I have another issue that's in the news to talk to you guys about. You may have heard of it if you haven't. The Geospatial Information Authority of Japan, aka GSI, which is essentially just Japan's like map makers, have released a new set of icons to be used on Japanese maps for foreigners. And you may be wondering, like, I don't care Rachel, why do I care? At least one of the symbols that they're changing is kind of controversial in a way. And I was going to talk to you guys about it at some point and I figure now is as good a time as ever. So to give you guys a little bit of background on why they're doing this, Japan is hosting the Olympics in 2020, so they've really been trying to globalize the country more and make it more foreigner friendly. Some of the symbols that they use on maps right now are very Japanese specific. So one thing they've been doing over the past couple years is they've been conducting surveys and interviews of foreigners um, who are like exchange students or people who work at embassies here or even just tourists and they've been showing them several different symbols on the Japanese maps and asking them how easy it is to understand them. And so that's where they've come up with these new symbols that they just released. They didn't just make it out of nowhere and be like, oh, these are the symbols we're picking. They've actually been doing a lot of work and research trying to figure out what the absolute best symbols would be for foreigners. You can find their whole report on their website and I'll link to it down below if you guys want to check it out. They go into great detail on everything they've done. Obviously, it's in Japanese, so um, if you don't speak Japanese, you can still understand some of it just by looking at the pictures and the numbers and stuff. So for example, one symbol that Japan has traditionally been using on their maps is an H in a circle, which stands for hotel. However, for a lot of foreigners, we may see that as something like hospital or for me personally, Helicopter pad! That's what I imagine. They've conducted several levels of surveys, but the most recent survey, they showed the original symbol plus a new one which shows a person sleeping in a bed with a lamp and asked which one of these is more understandable as meaning a hotel. And overall, 61% of people said the person sleeping in the bed is a much easier symbol to understand. Whereas only 18% of people said, ah oh, yeah, I can get hotel from the H in the circle. So the little sleepy bed man symbol is one of the new symbols that they're proposing be used. Another symbol, probably one of the most difficult symbols for non-Japanese people to understand, is the original police box symbol in Japan. It's just an X. So if we saw an X on a map, I would think like, treasure? buried treasure here or something. I wouldn't really know what it was. Actually, I didn't even know this was a police box symbol, so I guess I suck at living in Japan because I never learned that. Here you can see that only 4% of people said they understand an X, whereas they have a little sheriff star. 27% of people said that was okay, and then like a little police officer. And 33% of people said that was the most easily understandable symbol. And one thing they've done is write down comments, so of course they have a more complete understanding of why people voted the way they did. So for this police box symbol, someone from Sweden said X makes no sense. Someone from Germany said number two is better, but it's kind of complicated. Another one of the symbols that they're changing is the symbol for post box. And the symbol for post box here is the katakana te in a circle, which we obviously don't use abroad. So they've proposed changing it to just a letter. Most people make comments like foreigners who haven't been to Japan aren't going to understand the symbol, which I think is also pretty true. So let's move on to the number one symbol that people are debating right now. Whereas all the other symbols that they're proposing changing, I completely understand the new symbol that they've proposed and I think honestly a lot of those will really help foreigners who are coming here. This symbol is debatable and that would be the swastika. I'm sure most of you know this, but if you don't, the swastika was originally a Hindu Buddhist symbol. Um, it may have been used for other things even before that, but it's thousands and thousands of years old. So this is a very like sacred religious symbol that has been around for a long time before it was adopted by Nazis and then like the whole image of it was completely destroyed. But whereas in the West we don't have a lot of Buddhism and Hinduism, so we're not very familiar with that history of the swastika, here in Japan there are a lot of Buddhist temples and a lot of Japanese people are partially Buddhist, so they're extremely familiar with this symbol and if they see the swastika, their first thoughts are going to go to Buddhism and not to Nazism like a lot of foreigners would. If you've been to Japan and you've used Google Maps to look up temples to go to, you've seen this symbol all the time. Sometimes you'll actually see it at the temple themselves. And so if you're not familiar with it, some foreigners can get confused and maybe kind of offended. But this is the one symbol that I 
personally, I think it's really sad that they would have to change this symbol because it has such an intense religious history to it. I mean, I feel like we're losing to the bad guys. Like, why should the Nazis still be winning at something? It's not fair that they took this symbol and then made it something horrible. I would prefer that they left it as a swastika because if a foreigner comes to Japan and they don't know what it is, then that's a really good opportunity to educate them about it. And that way we don't have to lose the symbol to the Nazis. I can understand why they would want to change it for foreigners who don't know about Buddhism or Hinduism because even if you put a huge sign at every swastika in Japan that says this is a Buddhist symbol. It's a sacred symbol that has been around for 2,000 years. It has nothing to do with Nazism or anything. You're still not going to teach everyone about it. I mean, you guys probably spell my name incorrectly more often than correctly, and it's the name of our channel. So there's no way to teach everyone something. But still, I don't think it would hurt to try. But either way, you know, it's their decision to make and none of these symbols have actually been finalized yet. These are still just the proposed symbols. So it'll be later this year that they actually make the announcement of which symbols for sure they will be adding to maps for foreigners. And by the way, these are all just symbols that they're changing for maps for foreigners. They're not using these on maps for Japanese people yet. All in all, they've proposed 18 new symbols for foreigners and they've also looked at things like how they should spell things on maps to make it more easily understandable. So for example, they're trying to figure out the best way to label a shrine. The word for shrine in Japanese is Jinja. So they've been saying, should I call it like a Jinja and shrine? Or should I just call it shrine? Should I just call it Jinja? So they've really been doing their due diligence on conducting research to figure out what the absolute best way to label maps for foreigners is. And I give them a hand for that because that's a lot of work that goes into that. So I think they've been doing a really great job. Despite how controversial some of these changes are, I understand what they're doing and I appreciate all the work that they're putting into it. And I do think it'll be really helpful for new foreigners who will be coming into the country who don't have a lot of background knowledge about Japan, especially as we get closer to the Olympics. So anyway, let me know what you guys think about these new symbols and especially what you think about the swastika because that's kind of the big one and I'm still kind of hoping that they might leave the original one. But I understand both sides to it. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later. Bye. If you've ever been to Kyoto, you've probably noticed these things up against a lot of the shop walls. But just what are they? The most common widely known usage, which they're named after, was traditionally to prevent 